My name is Matt Lambeau. I am the Cisco Brewery, Triple Eight Distillery, Nantucket Vineyard brand manager. I live and work right around Boston, and I have a really fun job. Well, we're actually one of eight places in the world that make wine, beer, and spirits. Well, I've been involved since 2002, uh, working for Cisco Brewers and selling the beers and spirits. I get to go around to bars, restaurants, liquor stores, meet with them, talk to them about our wonderful products we make on Nantucket, and really spread the love. Some of the most important things if you're going to be selling Triple Eight and Cisco, uh, number one, you got to have the knowledge about the brand. You got to be able to answer questions. It's important to, to know all that. Beyond that, you definitely have to be a people person. You have to look at things from the restaurant owner's perspective. And when you walk into an account, you got to be able to think, well, what is going to work at this, at this establishment? And, and really be, do your homework. So when people ask you how our orange vodka is made or whether there, there are any glutens in our spirits or um, what type of hops we use in our whale's tail pale ale, you, that knowledge should really be at your fingertips. There's a lot of maintenance that, that occurs where you know you can get a draft line, but you have to make sure that the customer remains happy and enthusiastic about the brand. There's a lot of visiting with bartenders, waitresses, doing education, and making sure that the people that sell our products are enthusiastic about the brand. Beyond that, you really need to have a, a true understanding of what Nantucket's about, the, the people that visit, the, the general clientele, and the atmosphere that's portrayed. So something you should definitely do as you go from account to account is number one, ask them if they've, ever, if they've ever been to Nantucket, and number two, invite them to come to Nantucket. And we would love to have you at our facility, host your group, give you a private tour, and really hands-on explain to you and let you get a real feel for why these products are as good as they are. You, you can taste it in the bottle, you can show it to them at their bar, but when they get out there to experience the environment and the camaraderie, and how much people simply love our products, it changes their perspective. They become a true believer. They become salesmen for us. So you can't be at every liquor store, every restaurant, behind every bar in your area. But if you convince all those bartenders and liquor store owners, and even the girl that runs the cash register, if you convince all those people and, and let them experience what we have on Nantucket and what we have in our portfolio, the love and craftsmanship and, and true caring, that goes into the creation of these products. When you can convey that and get them to experience that, you have a salesperson for life. It's, it's, it's worked wonders uh, at a lot of our accounts, and it should for you too. We're at the Craft Beer Cellar in Belmont, and they are proud supporters of craft beer. They have a lovely new store here in Belmont Center, recently non-dry town, and they've done a great job uh, really featuring all of our products on the beer side, and uh, beautiful Nantucket rack, Lots of nice signage. Just got Santa's beard put in the window. The tin signage is key in both retail and on-premise. Multiple formats of the whale's tail. Product in the Nantucket rack in a nice central spot next to the coolers. We prefer to have it up in the eye level section. It's also very important to make sure that there's some presence within the liquor store. Um, to, to use shelf talkers and use product racks when available. Um, to make sure that there is some visibility for the brand so the consumer has the ability to see the brand, learn a little bit about the brand, and, and pick up the brand. Um, and then the whole line of beers, particularly on the top level here, we have, we have multiple SKUs, not just one SKU. And uh, then it goes down into some of the higher priced Woods beers and uh, really just a great selection of Cisco brewers. It's all good stuff. They're, they're great people. It's very important to develop a relationship with the buyer. You can friend them on Facebook. You can have similar interests or likes and dislikes. It's just important to relate to them on a level other than alcohol. Craft brewing and, and micro brewing definitely became very popular in uh, the early 90s. Um, we were founded in 95, um, right during that boom. And in the late 90s, there was actually quite a few brew, uh, brew pubs and breweries that went out of business. Um, there was an explosion and the market wasn't quite ready for it. Fortunately, with the, the success of the island and all the visitors we have, and some really wonderful, loyal customer base, we were able to weather that storm and frankly thrive within that environment. Now, since then, we've seen a real resurgence in the late, late like, since like 2005, 2006. Craft beer has been really the fastest growing segment within the beer industry. So while brands like Budweiser and Michelob have been losing market share, craft breweries have been gaining market share rapidly. Even Belmont Center, 
Heading towards Watertown to Martinetti. This is a large liquor store, one of the largest in the, in the, in the state, and they sell Cisco and AAA. When I go into a liquor store, uh, the first thing I try to think of is where am I? Look from the liquor store's perspective. Who are their customers? Who, what kind of products do they buy? And what products will work within this establishment? When you're at a liquor store, be sure to utilize all the point of sale that we have. Utilize the shelf talkers. Get the products placed at the proper height on the shelf. So here we're seeing some nice sell through. When you get to the store, you want to make sure that you pull the bottles forward in a way so they are, you know, helping the retailer again and uh, lining them up so they're facing forward and so they uh, so they're up in their slot so they're easy to get to the customer and, and more visible. Price right too, $24.99 next to $34.99 at Cold River, uh, Hangar One's $37.49. Get that in that magic price point at $24.99 and uh, you definitely see a lot more movement. At a liquor store, offer to conduct and set up samplings. A lot of states will allow you to sample your beverages directly there at the liquor store, directly to the consumer. So it's important to ask the retailer, can I come in and sample these products on a Friday or Saturday afternoon when you're, when you're busy and flowing? And when you can incorporate and get it in their mouth, oftentimes you'll get it rung in the register. So offer to do samplings at liquor stores. Triple A vodka is made with organic ingredients and it's also uh, made with the all natural flavoring. So, you know, Absolute and Kettle One and Stoli, they use chemicals to get blueberry flavor. Um, we use real blueberries from Maine, real cranberries from Nantucket, real oranges from Florida, and actually two vanilla beans right in the bottle here. Absolute Mandarin, Again, it's made with fake chemical extracts, but in order to make it look orange, they color the glass so the whole package looks more orange, when in fact this is completely clear and completely just mediocre vodka and chemical extract. They're the, they're the original beer bar in Boston, for sure. Um, I think they have over 100 draft lines and over 200... Uh, over 200 beers in bottle, and uh, it's a pretty amazing selection. And fortunately, they, they carry Whale's Tail year, year round. Um, it's one of their top sellers on draft. Get what you want. <laughs> oh, goodness, that's <laughs> delicious. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Really drinkable beer, pairs well with all kinds of food. Beautiful color, really nice temperature they're serving it at. Really big, sort of bready nose. You pick up some yeast. Yeah, and then just wonderfully drinkable, almost 6%. Strive for visibility within the bar or restaurant. Ask for the draft placement. Ask for front and center shelf placement. Ask for beers and wines and spew. Ask for products in the proper position. Another good idea is to offer to reprint menu inserts. They have menus that they like, and if you want to change something, it's a good idea to offer to reprint the insert that goes in the menu. Then you have some say over what goes into that menu, our beers, our spirits, our wines. So offer to reprint. It's not a large cost, and it has qu quite a big return. Be sure you're talking to the decision maker. Don't just roll into your pitch on the host or the bartender or a waitress. Ask who makes the decisions. Make sure you're talking to the right person, and then roll. ABC. What's it stand for? Always be closing. Ask them which products they like. Ask them what would work best in their bar. Ask them which product they think would sell the best in their liquor store. Always spin it in a positive manner. Always do it with a smile on your face, but ABC, always be closing. If you leave the store without asking for the sale, it's your fault. We're at the wall here in uh, downtown financial district. We're about to get crazy. Promotions and events are important to our business. Promoting our product is the next step after you sell the product. It needs to be promoted. Oftentimes, restaurants and liquor stores require events. Sometimes you can hook into other events that are occurring, charities, fundraisers, and not really spend any money on the event, but donate product. That's also a very wise idea. Hey, hey, hey. How are you guys doing? I, I, I think I drank one of those.